Good day, Deacon Word family. Welcome to day 19 of our Bible study review. We're in the book of Exodus in the chapter review for today. It's going to be seven and eight, just two chapters. Now these two chapters are filled with so much. And so let's get into it. Yesterday we left off. Moses is still giving his excuses to Elohim and Elohim is not hearing it. He's not hearing it from him. He's not hearing it from you either. If our Heavenly Father has commanded you to do something, it is because He has chosen you for that specific task and He knows what He is able to do through you. It is not your power. It is not your strength. It is by His Spirit that these things are able to come about. All right? But nonetheless, the Father has mercy on Moses. Although Moses grew up in the palace, Moses is now in his Hebrew identity. You see, the thing is, Moses grew up with an Egyptian identity. He grew up in the palace with the previous Pharaoh. He knows the power that is behind Pharaoh. Moses has seen just a little taste of what his own Elohim can do, but he hasn't seen it at the full magnitude yet. So our Elohim knows that. That's not a surprise to him, okay? He showed him the power of the rod turning into a snake, his hand turning into a leprous snow hand basically and he's also seen water turn into blood on the ground but moses grew up in the palace with pharaoh he also has seen magicians do the same things all right so i just want to put that in your mind before we read forward because now moses is fully taking on his hebrew identity and he doesn't quite know the power of his own god just yet with all that being said, let's walk into chapter 7 and let's see what Yahuwah Elohim has to say. Verse 1, So Yahuwah said to Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Pharaoh. He's saying, I have made you like a god before him. And Aaron, your brother, is Nabi, prophet. Verse 2, You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, shall speak to Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go out of his land. But I am going to harden the heart of Pharaoh, and shall increase my signs and wonders in the land. And Pharaoh is not going to listen to you, and I shall lay my hand on Mitzrayim and bring my divisions and my people and the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim by great judgments. And our Elohim says, And the Egyptians, the Mitzrites, they shall know that I am Yahuwah when I stretch out my hand and remove my people from their land. As we move down a little bit further, it says that Moshe, Moses, was 80 years old and his brother Aaron is 83. So please tell me, what's your excuse? Because these are old men. Our Elohim speaks to them and uses them late on in their life. Can you imagine the doubts that they have in their head about why would Elohim choose them? Two old men, two Hebrews, two slaves to bring salvation? Come on, y'all. Seriously, this story starts off with Moses being born when there's an edict in the land to abort all baby boys. And now, fast forward, we're seeing him at 80 years old. Why didn't Elohim choose someone younger? Why didn't he choose someone who looked more able-bodied? Why didn't he choose someone who didn't st st stutter? Come on, y'all. He uses imperfect people with flaws so that he may be glorified, so that people know it's the hand of Elohim. That's why he uses the broken. That's why he uses those who have speech problems. That's why he uses those who have come out of addiction. That's why he calls the unqualified. That's why he calls those who the world disregards. Is that not the same with our Messiah? Our Messiah went out to go get his disciples. Other rabbis waited for the disciples to come to them. Okay? The way that the world does things is completely different from the way that our Elohim does things. His ways are higher, and he knows exactly what your shortcomings are. It doesn't faze him. All right, let's get back to the reading. You know sometimes I gotta stop and stir you up. Stir up the gift, all right? All right, verse 9. When Pharaoh speaks to you saying, show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, take your rod and throw it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So that's the instruction of Yahuwah Elohim to Moses to speak to his brother, right? So they do exactly 
as he commands. So in the eyes of Pharaoh, he takes the rod. Aaron does. He throws it down and it becomes a snake. But guess what? Pharaoh also has his practitioners and they know witchcraft. And y'all, witchcraft is tapping into the spirit realm. So yeah, they had demons working with them. Oh yes, the enemy also has signs and wonders. Yes, he does. He just needs an able body to inhabit. And so we see that those who partake in witchcraft, those are the ones who open themselves up to be used from the other kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. But nonetheless, our Elohim shows himself more mighty because they throw down their rods and their staffs and they become snakes as well. But the snake of the rod of Aaron swallows their snakes. But even so, this does not impress Pharaoh. He hardens his heart and he still says, I will not let Israel go. Verse 14. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, the heart of Pharaoh is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out in the water and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him and take in your hand the rod which was turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, Yahuwah, the Elohim of the Hebrews has sent me to you saying, let my people go so that they may serve me in the wilderness. But see, until now you have not listened. So this is what Yahuwah says to Moshe. Thus said Yahuwah, by this you know that I am Yahuwah. See, I am striking the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. What is our Elohim trying to communicate to Moses? Trust, confidence. He tells Moshe, he goes, look, the water is going to be turned to blood. The fish are going to die. It's going to stink. The Egyptians will not have water to drink. I will show my mighty hand. And he's like, you, yeah, you, Moses, 80-year-old, stuttering 80-year-old, I'm using you to glorify myself. So Moses and Aaron do exactly as Yahuwah Elohim commanded. Aaron is right beside his brother. And so Moses speaks to his brother and he tells him, all right, strike the rod to the water. And we see that the water turns into blood. The fish die, Pharaoh sees this. But it also says that pharaohs, magicians, witchcraft practitioners also do the same thing with water. So he hardens his heart. But a little further down, it says that all the land reeks of blood. The land is filled with this blood from the river. Do you know what blood smells like when it oxidizes? If you're a nurse, a doctor, if you have experience seeing a dead animal on the road, if you step close, it smells. Why? Because it is dried blood. It reeks. Now imagine that smell all across the land times 100. It is rank and stank. So the Egyptian citizens under Pharaoh's hand do not have clean water to drink. They're digging around this river that is filled of blood, desperate for water. Y'all, we need water to survive. Do you see how a selfish leader do you see how coming under the wrong leadership can make an entire nation suffer? Now, as we walk into chapter eight, we see, you know, Pharaoh is not backing down. He's not. His magicians, in his mind, can do the same thing that their God can do. So he's like, mm. until he shows a mightier work, he was like, no, nah, I'm not bowing down. So our Elohim tells Moses and Aaron, he says, go. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And if he refuses, then I am smiting your borders with frogs. Now, if you know anything about frogs, frogs themselves are not wicked. But frogs are a symbol of unclean spirits. If you've never heard this before, research that, okay? Not only do frogs represent unclean spirits, but frogs themselves carry nasty diseases. Heard of salmonella? Yeah. Frogs carry that. <laughs> and so he's saying, I will smite your land with this. There's not going to be a space in your house. There's not going to be anywhere that you step that a frog is not. And so Moses and Aaron do as Yahuwah Elohim commands. Moses tells Aaron, stretch out the rod to the banks, to the borders, to the rivers. And once he does, the frogs come up out of the waters. Now, it says that Pharaoh's magicians do the same thing, but see, they're not able to stop it. So Pharaoh calls. He sends for Moses. He has to come to Moses for these frogs to stop. He says, 
Pray to your Yahuwah. Pray to your Elohim that he takes away the frogs from me. He goes, then I will let your people go and slaughter to your Elohim. And Moses responds to Pharaoh. He says, explain yourself. When shall I pray for this to stop? And he tells him, tomorrow morning. So Moses, he gets up and he calls on the name of Yahuwah. And he prays for these frogs to stop. Let's read verse 13. And Yahuwah did according to the word of Moshe. Stop. Do you see? Our Elohim is building trust with Moses. He prays to him. And now it says that Yahuwah Elohim does according to the word of Moshe. Do you see how covenant works? Do you see how the Father is trying to show you that when you trust in the finished works of our Messiah, and when you pray, right? When you walk in obedience to his commands, because the commandments are not done away with. When you walk in obedience to the commands and then you pray, he hears your prayers. And yes, he may be so gracious to answer your very specific prayer. That's how you build trust. That's how you build faith. But if you do not hearken to his voice and listen to his commands, what makes you think he's going to answer your prayers? So Yahuwah Elohim answers the prayers of Moses. He stops the plague of the frogs. But see, there's an issue. The frogs are dead, but they're piled up everywhere. And so guess what? It's rank and stank again. All right? Think about the blood drying up and how stank it is in the land. Now the frogs. Even so, Pharaoh sees relief. So he's like, ah, oh, I will not let your people go. Pharaoh hardens his heart yet once again. So our Yahuwah has another plan. He has another plague and it's a plague of gnats. And he tells Moses and Aaron, same thing. Moses, tell your brother Aaron, take the rod, take the staff, strike the dust of the earth, and gnats will be everywhere. It'll be in their houses, all over the animals, everywhere. And it says that Pharaoh's magicians try to attempt the same thing, but they can't do it at this point. Even Pharaoh's magicians at this point tell Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim. At this point, <laughs> we can't stand neck and neck with him anymore. But Pharaoh wouldn't even listen to them. He hardened his heart yet again. And so our Yahuwah Elohim tells Moses, he goes, rise up in the morning and you shall go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go unless I am sending another plague, a plague of flies to you. And if you do not let my people go, I will show you a sign, a distinction between my people and your people. In the land of Goshen, there will be no flies. I will make a distinction between a holy people and an unholy people. Let that speak to you, y'all. The judgments of Elohim are for the outsiders. There's going to come a point in time where the whole world is experiencing things that the children of Elohim won't. They will look at us and they will be provoked to jealousy. And they will ask why we aren't dealing with the same things that they're dealing with. And if you ain't ashamed, you'll tell them exactly why. It's because you're a set apart people. You are set apart to worship the Holy One of Israel. And so this happens. Pharaoh isn't listening. So the plague of flies, it happens. And then he sends for Moses and he says, pray to your Yahuwah Elohim. And he says, I will let you slaughter, but slaughter here in the land of Egypt. And Moses says, no, what we slaughter is an abomination to you. Most people don't understand what Moses is talking about. The Hebrews slaughtered cows to their Elohim, to our Yahuwah Elohim. Cows are sacred in Egypt. So Moses said, if we slaughter in the land of Egypt, the slaughterings to our Elohim, will your people not come and throw stones at us, try to kill us? Moses says to Pharaoh in verse 27, let us go three days journey into the wilderness, then we shall slaughter to our Yahuwah, our Elohim, as he commands us. Pharaoh says, okay, I'll let you go. Only don't go far. He goes, please pray for me. Pray that the plague of these flies goes away from me. So Moses goes and he prays to Yahuwah Elohim. And Yahuwah moves towards the words of Moshe. So the plague of the flies stops. Pharaoh hardens his heart once again. Chapter 8 ends with Pharaoh hardening his heart once again. And this goes to show you that this is very similar to those who are running the world system right now. 
Please, please believe that our Yahuwah Elohim has given them plenty of chances to repent from their wickedness. And so one day we will see the story of Exodus repeat again. Deep in word, family, I hope that you have received edification and that you build up confidence to trust your Yahuwah Elohim. Walk by his commands. Trust in his mighty hand. Pray to him day and night. Build the trust between you and your covenant partner. No doubt Yahuwah Elohim could do all of it by himself, but he chooses us. He chooses us. He wants to show glory. He wants to do mighty miracles through us because he loves us. He's in covenant with us. Deep in word family, that's all I have for today. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, Yah bless.